Because of many human-related factors, many wild animal populations worldwide are plummeting. This means that some of the world's rarest animals are becoming even rarer, and certain species are disappearing altogether. It's important that we do everything we can to help these animals to bounce back, and hopefully they won't be heading towards extinction. In today's video, I will be focusing on a particular group of animals, and these animals are the even-toed ungulates. This is a rather misleading name for this order, as it includes animals that don't have toes at all. Whales, dolphins, and porpoises belong to this order, and so do animals such as deer, giraffes, and hippopotamuses. I will be focusing on the rarest members of this order, and I will be ranking them on their estimated wild population. For our first species, we can head over to East Africa, as we have the Walia ibex. This species is only found in the northern mountains of Ethiopia, and they prefer to live in steep rocky cliff habitats. This species is very closely related to the alpine ibex, and for a long time it was considered to be a subspecies of the alpine ibex. In their natural habitat, these mammals are mostly peaceful grazers, but they do have to keep an eye out for predators. Young ibex are hunted by a variety of fox and cat species, yet only spotted hyenas are known to take down adult ibex. Even though this species has a very small wild population, today it's only listed as vulnerable. It was threatened by habitat loss and hunting, and by 1996 there were only around 200 to 250 animals left. Thanks to conservation efforts, this animal's population has grown today, and they're estimated to have a wild population of around 500 to 600 mature individuals. Their small population is partially due down to the fact that they are found over such a small area, and they are the seventh rarest even-toed ungulate. For our next species, we can stay in Africa, as we have the Dharma gazelle. This species of gazelle is native to the Sahara Desert, but it has disappeared from most of its former range. Its population plummeted due to overhunting and habitat loss, and of course it was also hunted by many of Africa's predators. Today, only wild populations remain in Chad, Mali, and Niger, but there is a healthy captive breeding population. In Niger, the Dharma gazelle has become a national symbol, and it appears on the badge of the national football team. It really is a shame that such a beautiful animal is so endangered today, as it is currently listed as critically endangered. They are perfectly adapted to desert environments, as they get most of the water that they need from the plants that they eat. Unfortunately, useful abilities such as this haven't been able to help them, but captive breeding has. Captive breeding projects have been set up in Africa, Europe, and North America, but their wild population is still very small. It's estimated that there are around 200 to 300 mature Dharma gazelles left in the wild, but hopefully this will increase in the near future. For our next species, we will be heading over to a small island in Indonesia, as we have Kool's hog deer. This species is native to a small island in the Java Sea, and this deer is a relatively small species. They stand at around 70 centimeters at the shoulder, and they're closely related to the similarly sized Indian hog deer. One of their main predators comes in the form of reticulated pythons, but it's thought that these predators have little effect on their numbers. Instead, this deer's main threats come in the form of climate change, as they are affected by rising sea levels, prolonged droughts, and increased flooding. Thanks to protections that were put in place in 1977, this deer's population has grown slightly over the past few decades, yet they still only have an estimated wild population of around 120 to 250 mature individuals. This slots them in at number 5, and they are the rarest deer in the world. For our next species, we will be heading north to India, as we have the pygmy hog. Today, the pygmy hog is the rarest pig in the world, and it's the only species in its genus. As well as being one of the rarest, it is also one of the smallest species of pig in the world, as they max out at around 25 centimeters tall at the shoulder, and they only reach a maximum weight of around 9.7 kilograms. This species was once much more widespread, but due to human encroachment and the destruction of their natural habitat, they were thought to have gone extinct in the 1960s. Thankfully, a small population was rediscovered in 1971, and today they are currently listed as endangered. 
They are native to the tall wet grasslands in northeastern India, and they once existed through Nepal and Bangladesh. The destruction of these grasslands is the main reason behind their decline, and today there are only thought to be around 100 to 250 mature individuals left in the wild. This slots them in at number 4, and for our next species we will be heading over to the Philippines. The Mindoro dwarf buffalo is a relatively small buffalo species, as they measure up to 2.2 meters long and max out at around 300 kilograms. Even though they are a large animal, they are still small for a buffalo, and this is partly due down to the fact that they are only found on one small island. It's a common misconception that this species is a subspecies of water buffalo, when instead it is its own species. It's the only wild cattle species living in the Philippine archipelago, but unfortunately it's almost disappeared. It's currently listed as critically endangered, as human-related factors have had a massive effect on their population. An increase in the human population on their island has meant that there is less space for these buffalo, and the introduction of non-native cattle has led to an increase in disease. Thankfully, a small number of these animals are kept in captivity in the Philippines, but so far, captive breeding has not been a success. Hopefully, this can change in the near future, as they have an estimated wild population of around 135 to 180 mature individuals. This slots them in at number 3, and unfortunately, our next two animals are very close to extinction. For our next animal, we will be heading back over to Africa, as we have the Adax. The Adax is an antelope native to the Sahara Desert, and it is the only member of its genus. It was first described in 1816, and at that time it was known as the white or pale antelope. This species is sexually dimorphic with females being smaller than the males, and the colour of their coat depends on the season. They are perfectly adapted to harsh desert environments, because once again they get all the moisture that they need from the plants that they eat. The Adax is a relatively slow species, and this means that it often falls prey to humans, lions, leopards, cheetahs, and African wild dogs. This is part of the reason why they are so rare today, and they are currently listed as critically endangered. The main reason behind this animal's decline is unregulated hunting, as they have been completely wiped out in some areas. Fortunately, this animal's future is not as bleak as it may seem, as they actually have a very healthy captive population. Plenty of Adax exist in captive breeding programs around the world, but unfortunately their wild population still remains low. There are only thought to be around 30 to 90 mature individuals left in the wild, but at least they won't disappear altogether. For our final species, we will be heading over to Southeast Asia, as we have the Saula. This species is also known as the Asian Unicorn, as it is one of the world's rarest large animals. It is a forest-dwelling bovine, and it's known for being very elusive. It's native to a mountain range in Vietnam and Laos, and it was first described in 1993. It's strange that such a large animal stayed hidden from science for such a long time, and it turns out that the Saula is a very mysterious creature. They have been kept in captivity multiple times, although they usually die within a matter of weeks or months. This is why there are no Saula breeding programs, and it's also why most of the images of this animal are very grainy. They are currently listed as critically endangered, as they suffer from habitat loss, habitat fragmentation, and hunting. In Southeast Asia, snares are a major problem, and they are one of the cruelest ways to kill an animal. I would like to show you images, but they are simply too distressing, but you're free to look for yourselves. Thousands of these snares are laid in the jungle, and often they are forgotten about. When the animals get stuck in these snares, they have nowhere to go, and many die due to starvation or infection on a wound caused by the snare. Many animals end up maiming themselves trying to escape from these snares, and the people who set these snares are incredibly cruel. More than 30,000 snares have been removed from Saula habitats by conservation groups, but still, this may not be enough. It's estimated that they have a wild population of around 30 to 200 individuals, but as there are none in captivity, this is very worrying. The Saula is the rarest even-toed ungulate in the world, but hopefully, in the future, they can be saved. If you want me to do this video with another group of animals, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.